Vediamo subito la parola, il titolo del suo pezzo è l'idea di curabilità come base teorica per lo psicoterapeuta nell'approccio psicodinamico alla malattia mentale. È un titolo più lungo di quello che avrete letto sulla prima locandina. Prego. Grazie Pietro, grazie Luciana Stella e grazie anche a John Tolkien e alla American Academy of Psychoanalysis e alla Mezza che mi ha invitato. Um, io parlerò in inglese, voi avete diapositive in italiano e una traduzione in italiano sia scritta piccolo che per esteso per chi vede meno, quindi potete insomma, seguirmi. Um, I'm starting with a citation of Eugen Minkowski, who is a psychopathologist, since I think that psychopathology is uh, the basic connection between psychiatry and uh, um, psychodynamic psychotherapy. The very fact of approaching the patient as an individual who can heal, even without us being aware of it, has an influence on the personal, the family, the whole entourage, and tends to diminish this hostile <coughs> influence which is reality to the patient. Every psychiatrist, more than once throughout his career, has verified that, starting from the moment when he considers incurable the patient, when after several fruitless attempts he abandons the match, he becomes another toward his patients. Then he has nobody but an alienate in front of him. And this one, if he is a schizophrenic, collapses more and more in his autism. In psychiatry, the concept of curability may have sometimes itself a curative value. Now, in this paper, I'm going to talk about the idea of curing mental illness throughout psychotherapy. In the title, I have remarked that the person who should have an idea of curability is, above all, the psychotherapist himself. The reason is that this concept has to be comprehended and known in premise by who intervenes to administrate the therapy, the psychotherapist. However, in order to understand how the idea of curability is possible, a theoretical base of knowledge and a consequent <coughs> method are necessary. Only in this way the cure can be known and systematically practiced. We are aware that this is a very difficult topic as the word cure calls the term healing. And this is a goal that many colleagues believe unattainable in psychology and in psychiatry, in a private or public setting, university or a classic ambulatory. Just think about the common term recovery. In the psychological and psychiatric field, it is commonly used to mean a social functional recovery based on a behavioral improvement and not an actual healing. Let's think about it. For a medical branch, this meaning would be unacceptable. And it would be a catastrophe if in medicine there was the same attitude as in psychiatry. What if Hippocrates had a religious mentality, believing, for example, that body illness was a destiny or a evil, so that cure would not have been possible? probably many of us would not be here today. On the contrary, in the 5th century before Christ, in front of a sick patient, Hippocrates had an image, an idea of sanity in the human body, even if no efficient therapy was available at that time. Thanks to this idea, he founded medicine. And until the 20th century, the science of medicine had continued to exist, even if only after the knowledge of sepsis and the discovery of antibiotics in 1935, an actual therapy had started. The intuition of mental illness was already present in Marco Aurelio, 
the Roman emperor in the second century after Christ, when he distinguished between it, mental illness, and a criminal violence, deciding to not condemn a man who had killed his father. We have to wait for the French Revolution to see the psychiatrist Philippe Pinel liberating an inmate of the asylum from his chains so that the man would be devoted to his doctor throughout his life. Now, in Italy, the penal court of cassation has passed a sentence series condemning psychoanalysts or psychotherapists who are certified by private societies for um, abusive uh, practice of profession, since they did not have the license to practice. In fact, the law states that talk therapy is a medical act with the aim to cure in order to heal pathologies. So the law states, thus psychotherapy is a real form of therapy, typical of the medical profession, a method used for the treatment and cure of real illnesses, and only medical doctors and psychologists who have been licensed by the state can practice it. This implies that we have the ethical, deontological obligation to intervene with this aim to heal. Nevertheless, in order to think about the concept of healing, it is necessary to have an idea of illness, mental illness. As we want to cure through psychotherapy, we should have an idea of illness of the psyche and jump to an unconscious level. We might move the medical method to the non-conscious field. In particular, illness consists in a loss of an original condition of a physiological sanity when this loss is determined by an external cause, like in medicine, a pathogenic noxa. But this noxa could not be a bacterium or another organic etiology. In recent years, many scientific studies on the sector's alterations, which were caused by affective adverse events, have been published. These events were collocated in particular periods of life, for example, in the childhood and in the early adolescence. Some colleagues from King's <coughs> College of London have discovered that the reaction of sensitization in particular certain systems, uh, remarkably dopaminergic or serotoninergic, can occur as a consequence of a psychic form of aggression. According to these pathogenic psychological relationships, I would say at a non-conscious level, can provoke neurodevelopmental alteration and a proneness to mental illness. Moreover, in the last years, it has been observed that psychotherapy is able to determine a receptor's modification. Change the mind, and you change the brain, is the title of an article published on neuroimage in 2003. So, psychotherapy could be capable to connect the receptor's alteration, reaching the dead original physiological condition. According to this experimental data, the neurodevelopmental hypothesis on the origin of severe mental illness, such as, for example, psychosis, can be oriented on a psychological base. Instead of a biological one, differently from the past, when a neurodegeneration was the more common etiology considered, you know, in the same way of Kreppelin. Therefore, in mental illness, the neurobiological correlates should be seen not as a primary cause of the disease, but secondary to a psychological problem. In 2015, together with Italian and French colleagues, we have published on neuroscience a work that you see on the screen entitled Early Life Periods and the Development of Adult Disease. 
the human birth theory, a focus on mental illness. It shows that the prenatal period must not be confused with the postnatal one. In fact, in experimental condition, the postnatal neurodevelopment and behavior are influenced by events which follow the birth and in particular by the mother's behavior. In fact, it has been observed that a mother who is stressed before the delivery can have an influence on the offspring only after birth. The offspring born from a stressed mother, in fact, but which uh, are adopted at birth by a non-stressed mother does not show any alteration and has a physiological development. <coughs> Such evidence is in clear contrast with the common conception of illness as constitutive and organic. On the contrary, this data consent to the psychotherapist to think that a cure might be possible. At this point, let's let us jump again and move to the psychotherapeutic setting. Setting, transfer, and interpretation, the three cornerstones of my formation in psychotherapy. We know that the patients will come to the session with a non-conscious idea, sometimes conscious too, to be incurable, to be born like he or she is. At the beginning of psychotherapy, two different patients with different characteristics brought me two almost identical dreams <coughs> in an individual setting. <coughs> a 30-year-old girl, university student of law, and a 21-year-old boy with no job and no intention to study. The dream told about a child with a face that indicated a mental retardation and a big head as a malformation. They both had the non-conscious idea, I thought, to suffer from a mental retardation, a neurological, constitutive and organic disease, which was incurable. They didn't know each other. They probably thought they were stupid and not sick. Being a different from me, maybe the more lucky and intelligent therapist, a big head is used to mean a great capability to study and to think. Capuchona is said in Roma. They could not imagine that the therapist was equal to them of their same nature, human being. So imagine if the psychotherapist is convinced that illness is incurable at an unconscious level. Not only he cannot work to pay him as a cure in order to heal, but he also is not able to see and face the altered thoughts of the patients. In addition, the patient will likely be able to persuade the therapist that, unfortunately, he can do, cannot do anything with him, and he's doing a job with many limits until he makes the therapist feel totally impotent. How many times we feel this sensation or this communication by patients? In order to have a clear thinking about the psychotherapeutic identity then, like in medicine, since a clear medical identity exists, a base of knowledge of mind physiology would be necessary, at least an hypothesis of physiology. And this is for all psychotherapists, both for psychiatrists and psychologists. An intervention derived from an idea of curability cannot be based on a simple optimism. It will lead to what we could call blind practice, prasicega, driven by the subjective good intentions. I am close to you, I listen to you, I sustain you, but to take care is not to cure. 
psychotherapeutic profession like the medical one cannot depend on the subjectivity, on the subjective abilities. Until 50 years ago, the main reference point in psychodynamic psychotherapy has been all its psychoanalysis, in particular its conception of unconscious. In German, das Unbewusste. Despite the modifications by following schools, this term has maintained the same characteristics defined by Freud. Above all, this German word means not knowable, which is what we cannot know. While it has not been used, another term, das Unbekannt, which would have instead meant unknown, what I do not, but I could know. Freud chooses and uses only the first term. Paradoxically, even if not knowable, at the same time, Freud states how unconscious is characterized. He defines in it constitutively perverse and not modifiable, like a sort of original sin. In fact, this confirms the idea of a tragic destiny for humanity. Unconscious is also evil, with a capital E. I had already mentioned between the conscious and the unconscious, writes Freud, the moral self was the conscious, the human self was the unconscious. The S is a chaos, a cauldron of seething excitement. We suppose that it is somewhere in direct contact with somatic processes and takes over from them instinctual needs and gives them mental expression. Naturally, the id knows no bias, no good and evil, no morality. <coughs> so, according to Freud, unconscious is madness. In relation to these, patients would be different from psychotherapists only for the corruption of unconscious into conscious. An emergence of what would be a natural human dimension it is not modifiable, but can be controlled and managed through awareness, which can be reachable through psychoanalysis. Awareness is a rational management. We have to pay attention to this, because it's a rational management of our own feeling and affection, affections. Apparently, a conflict resolution. But what if it was a deficiency or even a loss of affectivity. In Italian, is defined anaffettività. The risk is uh, to reach a schizoid condition, which is probably free of conflicts, neurosis and psychosis, even with a functional recovery, but in fact, it is a severe illness. This convention of a constitutive illness then can collude with the idea of incurability of the patient, who is already sure that he cannot change. Therefore, research is not permitted and the psychotherapist can get paralyzed. The child with mental retardation from the dream becomes real and instead to be interpreted as a negation of the human possibilities and the human truth he is no more curable. Finally, one cannot do anything but send the patient to an exorcist. That is a very frequent practice that we have, unfortunately. And I don't think Italy at least, I don't know in the United States, and in France too. A couple of years after starting to treat a 30 years year old girl, I discovered that she had actually been sent to an exorcist before the psychotherapy with me. Moreover, uh, in the Freudian conception, uh, Freud does not distinguish between the prenatal and postnatal phase. In an ambition, symptoms and anxiety from 1926, he states, there is much more continuity between intrauterine life and the earliest infancy than the impressive cesura of the act of the birth would tell us live. In addition, he uh, does not recognize the difference between human and animal birth. 
And in philosophy, uh, Martin Heidegger has an analogous thinking in being in time from 1927, one year after inhibition symptoms and anxiety, he states that in humans, being born is being rejected into the world, the void benign, the animal delivery, like it happens to lambs or cows. Now, in counterposition to this conception, some works have been published in Italy starting in 1971 and after being elaborated in 64 and 65, preceded by a psychopathology manuscript from 62 on delusional perception, sulla percezione deviante. They have been nationally known for a long time now, and in the last years they have been widely spread in the world. They were about the human birth theory by Professor Massimo Fagioli, a well-known medical doctor and scientist, psychiatrist and psychotherapist <coughs> of the collective analysis. His last book regarding his lessons at University of Psychology, Chiedi Pescara, in the year 20, 2011, has now been published by Lasimo Edizioni with the title Matter Energy Thinking. You, you will find some book on the table outside. Fagioli recognized that the human mind, together with the human body, is activated at birth. He discovered, in fact, that the human board, the cerebral substance, reacts to an absolutely new stimulus, the light, with the drive, pulsione, which is directed against the non-human and inanimate surroundings and makes it disappear. This formulation has also been supported by recent findings on neurobiological development that, development that we have no time to cite. He distinguished also for the first time between trib, pulsione, drive, and instinct, instinct, which is animal and not human, while pulsione is human. Through the pulsione, the human body of the fetus disappears at birth, being non-existent anymore. In this reaction to light, vitality occurs, and the existence of a human being, created by the relationship with the inanimate nature, starts. The time of life starts as well. So the mental activity initiates with the capability to imagine, which derives from the pulsione. Newborn's mind may cast that makes the light non-existent and at the same time makes the first image, the first activity of thinking. This is based on the memory of the contact with the amniotic fluid, whose sensation has remained on screen. So, on the skin it uh, remains the sensation of the contact with the amniotic fluid. And uh, this is the start of the mind that is no conscious mind. This non-conscious mind reemerges every night when we go to sleep, but as though it apparently seems to be incomprehensible, we have to alight that it might not be that Mr. Hyde believed by Freud, with any implication with psychosis or perversion, just a thinking different from the consciousness. Difficult to understand for us who are usually rational, but it's another way of thinking, similar to artists. This transformation from the awakeness to sleep is connected to the word recreation. We recreate every night the mind of the world and of the first year of life without a consciousness and an articulate language. Mm. Nevertheless, if after birth the certainty that a breast exists is disappointed in the non-conscious relationship with the person who nourishes the baby, that should be nourish the baby not only physically but also psychologically, the mind reality of the bird would be lost or altered. So illness occurs. At first in dreams, invisible, then in relationships and in life choices which can apparently be normal, but does not correspond to the reality of the person and the actual possibilities 
she or she has. I choose to not study because I prefer to work, says a young adult, but it's not true. There can be a hidden depression or more. Afterwards, only afterwards, illness is expressed in the conscious thinking and behavior, so psychopathology, which start resulting after that. Until then, later, become symptomatic of an evident, um, an evident clinical case. And DSM arrives maybe only here and not before. In particular, at the origin of pathology at an unconscious level, there is the unknown drive, pulsione di annullamento, with a loss of the birth's vitality. Through this, the person's own affective reality is made to disappear, like it never existed. And this is a starting point of the illness. These concepts can be a base of knowledge of physiology of the mind, and of the loss of it, that we could say, like pathophysiology. Through it, the psychotherapist might reach something. He could know how to be and how to do in order to treat the patient, trying to obtain the healing and not recover. The concept of equality, which results from this theoretical formulation, is opposed to the patient's idea to be born bad. The therapist can interpret what is, it is loss and must be found again. In the therapeutic relationship, he can face the patient's idea of incurability and their inner emptiness because he knows physiology. He can help the patient recreate the psychic reality of the bird, the capability to react, the vitality, the capability to imagine, and the certainty that a breast exists. Thank you. Thank you very much to Daniela Polese. Grazie molto a Daniela per la sua lunga e interessante esposizione. Eh, abbiamo solo 10 minuti di pausa perché dobbiamo recuperare un po' del nostro ritardo. Quindi 10 minuti di stop e ci vediamo.